Gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latour. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for five minutes. Gentleman is recognized. I, I thank Permission the Speaker. Granted. Mr. Speaker, this has been uh, one heck of a day here on Capitol Hill. As a matter of fact, it's been one heck of a week. About uh, 13 days ago, the Treasury, the, the Secretary of the Treasury, came down to Capitol Hill, said that our markets are a mess, Wall Street's a mess, and if we don't give them $700 billion immediately, uh, it's going to be a big problem, and we take that seriously. But then there was little investigation, and they asked the Treasury, where did you come up with the number $700 billion? Well, they answered it last week in Forbes magazine, and here's the uh, Treasury spokeswoman's quote. It's not based on any particular data point. We just really wanted to come up with a really big number. Well, they succeeded. $700 billion is a really, really big number. It means really, really big things to Americans. A lot of us felt, because the Treasury Secretary also indicated that he could only spend $50 billion of your money a month, we had an amendment last night and we said, let's make it a lot less. Let's, make, let's save half a trillion dollars and let's give him some money. If he's right, he can rescue the, the economy. Everything will be all right. We're going to put in place some reforms uh, and we'll come back on November the 17th and we will figure out whether it's working or not. That sounded like a pretty reasonable plan to a lot of reasonable people, but that didn't happen. Last night, people who watch the House know that everything that comes to the floor comes to the floor pursuant to a rule. And the Rules Committee voted on that proposal last night to save half a trillion dollars. And they voted no, eight to four. And sadly, all eight were members of the Democratic Party and each of us represents about 600,000 people. And so 4.8 million people, basically, through their representatives, denied 305 million Americans the opportunity to have a vote, take 10 minutes and, and make a vote about whether or not we could save half a trillion dollars and perhaps not give the whole $700 billion of tax money to the Treasury. Well, then the bill left the House and it went over to our good friends in the Senate who, of course, are very fiscally conservative. They're wiser than we are because they have six-year terms. We only have two-year terms. And do you think that they just were happy sending it back to us at $700 billion? No. They sent it back to us at $850 billion and they added such wonderful things like $192 million for rum. Now, listen, I like rum. And it may be some of the senators were nervous that they were losing the pirate vote. I don't know. But there's $192 million for rum, $100 million for NASCAR. I like NASCAR, but what's it doing in this bill? Saving the Treasury. $81 billion to Hollywood and $2 million for wooden arrows for children. Now listen, all of these projects might be okay. They don't belong in a bill when the administration is saying that we need to act now or else the economy is going to melt down. But you know, some, some of my friends back home say, well, you know, three weeks, okay, if it's an emergency, uh, what have you guys been doing? Well, we had in August a, a little discussion around here about, I don't know how Mr. McCotter from Michigan feels, but my constituents were not really happy when gasoline went to $4 a gallon. And I'll bet we were probably talking about that, and that's why we couldn't get to the economy. Well, this Congress started in January of 2007, Gas was $2.22 a gallon. People said, that's, that's high, but okay, I can get by. So the Congress got together and we decided, or actually it was the Democratic majority decided, that the most important thing that we could discuss on that day was congratulating the University of California Santa Barbara soccer team for their championship. I like soccer. That's important. I'm sure their parents are real proud. But gas is $2.22. Well, then it goes up to $2.84 and people say, well, sure, I'll bet now you're going to try and figure out an energy policy for the country. Well, on that day, we declared it National Passport Month. And I know that everybody in America, when they filled up their gas tank at $2.84 a gallon said, well, I know it's expensive, but at least it's National Passport Month. Then gas went up to $3.03. And we've all been told that uh, we have to get the vote of the soccer moms to be reelected. So we tried that again. When gas was 303, we commended the Houston Dynamo soccer team because we really like soccer. Well, gas goes up to 377. Surely now your elected representatives in Washington get the picture. We're going to vote on gas. We declared it National Train Month, folks.
National Train Month. Well, then it goes up a little higher, $3.84 a gallon. Your Congress, thanks to the new majority, figures the most important issue is the great cats and rare canids. And for those of us that don't follow this, canids are dogs. So basically, we were voting on foreign aid for cats and dogs rather than dealing with energy. It goes to 409. First time in my history I paid over $4 for gasoline. Well, we're going to act in your behalf. We declared it International Sanitation Month because we really felt your pain. It crested $4.14 on uh, June the 17th of this year. You know that the United States Congress was grappling with energy prices. You know that the United States Congress had to be grappling with this meltdown of the economy. The majority party to the, that day decided that the most important issue facing America was the Monkey Safety Act. Now, folks, you deserve better than the Monkey Safety Act. You deserve lower gas prices. And folks, you deserve a better bill than you got today. I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired, Mr. Sherman.